Hi, this is This Guy Edits and I'm with Dr. Karen Perlman. I'm thrilled to present a new series for you that we like to call The Science of Editing. Karen, you are actually a doctor of editing. Is that a fair statement? I can't really help you if you don't feel well. I can help if your film doesn't feel right. Nice. Is there any scientific merit to the art of editing? What I'm really interested in, in an underlying way, is how do editors think? So I'm reading a lot about cognitive science and philosophy and psychology, and I'm really fortunate to have some colleagues who are working in these areas who are happy to consult with me to see what we can understand about what really is an editor's expertise. Can we say more than it just works? Or it's just instinct. Right. If we say it's just instinct, that's not really that helpful to someone who wants to learn how to edit. So I'm looking to find what is the workings of the mind of an editor? One of the things that stuck out to me is that you say great editing is actually not invisible. Yeah. Based on my PhD thesis, I was able to write some guidelines for the Australian Screen Editors Guild so that they could judge their editing awards. Editors shape three kinds of movement. They shape the movement of story, they shape movement of emotion, and they shape movement of image and sound. So when you're seeing a film that moves well, you're seeing good editing. Sometimes I think I'd prefer Arrival of Flesh and Blood. Oh, Emily, I don't spend that much time on the newspaper. It isn't just a time. Let's get into our first topic. You wrote a book called Cutting Rhythms and you have a chapter in there about on-screen drafting and how it can be helpful for filmmakers. What is on-screen drafting? You've heard editors say that the editor writes the last draft of the script. Quentin Tarantino saying the editor writes the last draft of the script. Martin Scorsese has said it, George Lucas has said it, and it occurred to me, why not bring the editor in sooner while you're still writing the script and make the script better by using the editor's thinking to develop the script. I like this one. But you don't need it. Editor's thinking, is it different than a director or a cameraman or an actor? An editor learns to think about movement and flow. So an editor's really special skills involve responding to the material that is on screen and shaping its movement. This is not what anyone else on the crew does. They generate the movement, they decorate it, they dress it, but what the editor does is respond to the movement. And that's a unique way of thinking. So are you saying that an editor's brain has evolved? My proposal is that the editor has specially developed their sensitivity to movement. All humans have what we call mirror neurons. And these neurons have been hypothesized to be your empathy neurons. They're how you understand what other people mean by looking at the way that they move. So when an editor sees movement on screen, she's responding to the movement using her mirror neurons. She's literally feeling the movement that she sees. This is what editors mean when they say it feels right or it doesn't feel right. Because as they shape the movement, they shape it and reshape it so that their neurons light up in exactly the right way for that moment in the edit. Now, you can't do that on paper. You can only do that with moving images. And that's why I'm proposing we need to make an on-screen draft. Take me through this. How do you make an on-screen draft? I think we can agree that filmmaking is an art form. And the processes for making films were actually defined long before we had digital tools. Traditionally, when you're making a film, you first shoot it, and well, you first write it, and then you shoot it, and then you cut it. And what I'm suggesting with an on-screen draft is that you first write it, and then you shoot it on really inexpensive technology and cutting it together. You use that to show you what the problems of the written script are. Then you go back and you rewrite the script again. So we're not cutting out the writer here. Have you used this process and if so, how? So in my latest short film, Woman with an Editing Bench, I actually got funding from Macquarie University to test this hypothesis about on-screen drafting. We did a two-day shoot of the first draft of the script. You know, I was pretty sure that this first draft of the script could not possibly be improved. We shot it, and I cut it together, and I learned so much about what the problems of the script were. I rewrote the script three more times. Can you give me an example where you changed because of what you've learned? One of the things I learned about my script was that my central character was getting sidelined. 
I could see through the mise-en-scene in the draft that she was being pushed to the side while the other two characters had the main argument that was at the center of the drama. When I went to do the real thing, I rewrote it so that she stayed central to the action and all eyes were on her. I may have some inventory to do before I start editing your project, Boris. Some of the problems that I come across when I'm editing is the character's point of view is somewhat fuzzy or there's not a focus on it. It can be really hard to tell from a script that's written on paper whether your central character's perspective will be the one that dominates the film. An editor has a lot of tricks for making that central character's point of view be the one that the audience follows. It's all about having the central character look and then cutting to what they see. If you're not here at 7 o'clock, you ain't gonna keep the job. Okay, and there's some other things you learned by using on-screen drafting. In the original, I had set up this backstory that the main character would be old friends of the guards. And so when the guards come to shut down her edit suite, it made the stakes just plummet into nothing. I then rewrote it so that the guards are actually menacing. She actually is frightened. And I learned that from the on-screen draft. If you had to give somebody a list of how to do on-screen drafting, what are the steps? Number one, write the first draft of the script. Number two, get out your iPhone and shoot that first draft. Number three, bring in the editor and cut it together. Number four, let the editor rewrite the script to make it work on screen. Number five, try it out on people, see what they think. Be warned though, it's gotta be ugly. And the reason it has to be ugly is that nobody can get too attached to it. You can let go of everything because it's just a draft. There's a, an article by Andy Clark that talks about sketching being what he calls, quote, a surrogate situation. It allows you to have some non-habitual uses of imagination. If you're not under the same time or money pressure, you might just try something else, and that might create a new way of doing something. Is it practical to shoot the entire movie? When I get my students to do it, I make them do the whole film because they're only making five-minute films. Uh, huh. Obviously, when you're doing a feature, you don't want to spend those weeks and weeks doing it. But I have heard of people making features and shooting the whole thing, shoot it in three days, cut it in six days. You learn immediately. It's a complete aha moment. On-screen drafting is fantastic. It taught me a huge amount about the script, about the characters, about the mise-en-scene. But in the end, the editor still wrote the last draft of the script. I dropped scenes, I changed dialogue, everything you say about editing in your videos, I did it. Karen, thank you so much. I hope we're going to do a couple of these. Thanks, Sven. I'll look forward to that. And with that said, if you have any questions, post them under this video. See you soon.